Well, hey, everybody, welcome to Real Church for Real People. Glad you guys have joined us this weekend and in all of our locations, hoping you are having a great experience so far. And uh, we are getting ready to jump into a new series starting next weekend, as you heard. I'll talk more about that uh, in a few minutes. But for this weekend, we are wrapping up a series that we've been in. Uh, This is actually week five of a series that we've called The Stories That Make Us, all about five parables or short stories that Jesus told They really have the power to change the way we view God and to view our own lives. And if you are joining us uh, for the first time, we started this series off by saying that one of the biggest decisions any of us will ever make in life, if not the biggest decision any of us will ever make in life, is the decision whether or not to listen to what Jesus says. And I get for some of us today, you may not be sure uh, you buy that yet, but we really Uh, have seen throughout this series that when when push comes to shove, it's all about whether or not we are actually willing to listen to Jesus. And last weekend, we discovered that a big theme in Jesus' stories, and when we lean in and listen, is that God can take something small and make it very significant, especially when we're willing to let go of it to serve others. And we saw that uh, last weekend, not only in the message, but you demonstrated that because church-wide, over 250 of you opted in to serve on the J team starting in the next few weeks. And yeah, I'm very, very proud of all of you for that in Newark and Hokesson and in Middletown, and we're very, very proud of all of you for that. So you signed up, and that's an amazing first step. The next step is to respond to those texts and emails you've been getting and, and uh, just show up and, and over the next few weeks start serving and let's make a difference together. So welcome to the, to the J team. Uh, for all of you who took that step, I'm excited about what God is going to do through your life. And as we jump into week five of this series, uh, many of you know I grew up in Canada and I grew up around a lot of water and I loved fishing when I was a kid. I just loved going fishing. There was something about it. And so recently I was in Idaho and I was speaking for one of the, uh, the churches that I coach, one of the pastors that I coach, and I had this thought before I went, I knew I was gonna be there for a few months in advance, and I had this, this thought, what if I went fishing while I was in Idaho? And it's kind of a long story, but people who love me have been encouraging me to find a hobby. And uh, so I thought, well, I used to fish a lot when I was a kid, it's kind of a hobby, what if I did that? So I reached out to the pastor and said, could you hook me up with somebody in your church to take me Fishing, something I haven't done a lot of over the past few years. We'd love to go fishing. And I am happy to report that I caught fish, people, like real fish. Like this is one of the fish. Come on, don't fail me now. Give me the picture. Don't leave me hanging. Come on, come on, please. Please, there is a picture of a fish. I can't believe this. There it is right there. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a real fish. The guy who took me fishing, by the way, kept saying, this is actually photo number five of the same fish, because he kept saying, hold it closer to the phone, it will look more impressive. You know, so <laughs> fish is only like that long, but if you hold it really close, it looks like a big fish. And I had a great day fishing, but at one point during the day, I got a fish on the line, and I was so excited. I mean, it, it was like my second or third fish of the day, and it fought like a good fish. You know, you kind of feel like, oh, it's a good fish. And I reeled it in, got it closer, seemed like a good fish from everything I could tell looking at it in the water. Got it even in the net, and I thought, this is a good fish, man. And I pulled it up out of the net to hold it up, and the guy who took me fishing took one look at what I had caught, and he said, oh, it's a chub. And I didn't know what that meant, but I could tell from the way he said it, it was not a good fish. I was like, oh yeah, chub, oh yeah, chub, yeah, no good, not good throwing that back for sure. And it just suddenly changed my perspective because somebody with experience knew the chub apparently is like this invasive kind of fish in that area and anglers don't really like them. There are too many of them. And so when you catch one, it's kind of a disappointment. It's not a good fish. Changed my perspective. Here's what I think. I think for a lot of us, whatever we believe about Jesus or church or faith, we have wondered at some point in our lives, if there is a God, And if he is choosing who gets in, who's a good fish, and who doesn't, who's a bad fish, then how does he choose? How does God choose who gets in? So in the book of Matthew, in the New Testament of the Bible, there's this one chapter, chapter 13, that is full of these short stories Jesus tells to illustrate spiritual truths. We've been hanging out uh, there all series long, and if you missed any of the messages, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel or our app and 
get caught up to speed because every one of these stories has changed for all of us who've been willing to lean in and listen, changed something about how we view God and how we view our own lives. And they're simple on the surface, but you got to lean in, got to really pay attention and listen to understand what these stories are all about. And Jesus' final story in Matthew 13 is about fish. Here's what Jesus says. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that was thrown into the water and caught fish of every kind. Now, many of us have wondered what God is really like. Wherever we land with spiritual things, we have moments, maybe some of our darkest moments, we wonder what God is really like. We find ourselves just wondering, what is, what is God really all about? And maybe even for some of us, we've had warped ideas about what God is like, maybe because of past religious experiences or uh, things that we've just kind of adopted as our mindset toward God that aren't really rooted in who he is, but we've come to believe that's what God is like. But Jesus says, if you wanna know what God is really like, here it is. He is the kind of God who wants as many people as possible of every kind, of every race and age and story, of all kinds of places in life, successes and failures, lots of accomplishments, full of insecurities. God wants as many people as possible in his kingdom, as many people as possible to experience his, the rule and reign of God in their lives. He is a God who wants as many people as possible, as Jesus would say in this analogy, in his net. That's what God is really like. God desires to see, to see as many people as possible experience his goodness and his grace. And you know, that's interesting because sometimes people who, who claim to believe in God give the impression that God only wants certain kind of people in his net. Sometimes we might give the impression from religious people that God only wants good people in his net. Or sometimes there's even a thing where God only wants people who have a really rough background in his net. And some of us are going, well, that's not me. Do I belong in the net? Jesus says, here's what God is like. He throws a net into the water and he draws in fish of every kind. And by the way, this is what followers of Jesus do. For all of us who are following Jesus, every time we talk about him, every time we invest in the lives of people who don't know him and we talk about our faith and we invite them to experience what God is doing in our lives, in their own lives, we are partnering with God to throw his net into the water. God works through ordinary people like us to do what Jesus describes here, to throw his net in the water and he draws in fish of every kind and that matters. And it matters that we're a part of that because God wants people of every kind in his kingdom or as the great philosopher Dr. Seuss once said, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Black fish, blue fish, old fish, new fish. This one has a little car. This one has a little star. Say what a lot of fish there are. That's how God wants it. That's right. Do a lot of work preparing for these messages. Reading the original source material, Dr. Seuss. God wants it that way. When God throws his net in the water, listen, he is not looking at what we think disqualifies us. He's not looking at track record or appearance or the things we've done or haven't done what we're proud of or ashamed by or scared of or hoping for. God just sees how much every one of us needs who he is and what he can do in our lives. And his net is thrown into the water of this world with the purpose and the intention that it would catch fish of every kind, the people of every kind, every race, every age, every background, every story, every resume, the people of every kind would be caught up in the love and the goodness of God. God wants his net full. That's who he is. That's who God is. That's what he's really like. God is a God who desires to see as many people as possible in his kingdom. It's how God wants it. And that means that it is not too late to get caught up in who God is. That no matter where you are in life, no matter what your story has looked like up until now, it is not too late for you to come close to God and for you to experience the God who created you coming close to you. It is not too late. No matter who else or what else has written us off, there is room in God's net for us. 
God throws it out in the water and it draws in fish of every kind. But Jesus doesn't stop the story there. He says, when the net was full, they dragged it up onto the shore, sat down, and sorted the good fish into crates or baskets, but threw the bad ones away. Now, throughout these five stories that Jesus tells in Matthew 13, we see the same thought play out several times. Is there in many of Jesus' stories that there is still time to decide right now. Still time to decide what we believe, where we're headed in life, who will become. There is still time, but eventually the time will run out. So Jesus says, right now the net is in the water. It is, it is drawing in fish of every kind, but the day will come when the net will reach the shore. When this world as we know it will come to an end, human history as we know it will come to a screeching halt, and all of us will be faced with the ultimate reality, who we are and how we've lived our lives and where we've put our trust. And the fish will be sorted. That means that anyone can get in the net, all kinds of fish, all kinds of people. But not all the fish that are in the net are called good fish in the end. Or as Dr. Seuss said, some are sad and some are glad and some are very, very bad. There's a sorting that's coming. So watch this. God welcomes fish of every kind. He welcomes people of every kind into his love, into environments like this. God does not meet people. God does not wade out into the water and look at the net and go, oh, that fish doesn't belong. Oh, that fish isn't right. Oh, that fish shouldn't be here. That's not God. That's not what he's like. Religious people can be like that sometimes. But that's not what God's like. God allows a long time of grace when anybody who desires to be in the net can be in the net. Anybody can come into an environment like this. Anybody can sense the presence and the goodness of God. Anybody can be in the net. He wants his net full. But in the end, a sorting will take place, which is kind of troubling, right? Some of us are like, I like the first part of the story. Not sure about the second part. Really like fish of every kind. But I don't know if I'm tracking with the good fish are kept and the bad ones are thrown away. And if you read a little further, as Jesus explains this story, he gets specific and he talks about hell, which is the way Jesus describes the fish that are thrown away. It's the way Jesus describes a wasted life. That at the end of it, if our trust was not in the right place, that our lives will be wasted. They'll be thrown away forever. And for some of us, we're very uncomfortable with that idea, and some of us have wrestled with when we wondered what God is like. What kind of a loving God would send people to hell? But God actually doesn't really send people to hell. He just gives us permission to continue living forever the way we decided to live now. And there's a sorting that takes place. Now, if you've never been a church person, this could be why, this whole hell thing. Because <laughs> maybe you've heard this before, and it's like, what's turned you off to Christianity? And maybe it's been misused, and maybe the only time you think about hell is, and people going there is when you're in traffic. Maybe you even tell them. It's the most biblical language you've ever used. But maybe you're a little turned off by this idea of hell. And I get it. But as misunderstood and misused as hell is, Jesus doesn't shy away from it. He's very clear, which brings us back to our question. Now we see why the question is so important. If there is a God and he is choosing who gets in and who's left out, how does he choose? I mean, who gets in, who's left out? How does God make that decision? Not just who's in the net, but who's in with God forever because this is so sobering. Apparently, we could be in the net but in the end, not be with God forever. What does that even mean? So how do we make sure that we're good fish? How does someone become a good fish? Work really hard? Get straight A's? How many of us would say, if that's what it is, I've already, I'm already out of luck? <laughs> go to church a lot? Like, is there a certain number of times in your life you need to go to church? And then it's like, okay, God, this is your good fish. 3,683 times. Some of us started late in life, so we need to be at church a lot. 
Is God saying, okay, you gotta go to church a certain amount of times and then you're a good fish. Don't kill anybody or steal anything or at least anything large. How does somebody become a good fish? From Jesus' perspective, not religion's perspective, not the world around us perspective, not my perspective, not your perspective. From Jesus' perspective, who's a good fish and who ends up being thrown away? Well, remember the first decision that Jesus desires for us to make, the most important decision ultimately that any of us can make? It is whether or not to listen to Jesus. That's a good fish. Someone who ends up with God forever is someone who listens to Jesus, who trusts him and follows him. So are you a good fish? You say, well, give me a minute. Let me reflect on my day so far. Not what I mean. I mean, are you someone who is listening to Jesus? You say, I spent a lot of my life not listening to Jesus. Not what I mean. I mean, are you listening to him now? And from this day forward, are you going to listen to Jesus so that you can be not just in the net, but in with God forever? Are you believing in the perfect work that Jesus did through his death and resurrection to make you right with God? Have you surrendered your life to him, or are you just going through the motions of the net? Because remember, God wants his net full. It's his desire. He draws in fish of every kind. He wants as many people as possible to find hope, find purpose, find Jesus. And so he throws the net into the water, and the net isn't full yet. This is why we partner with God to keep the net in the water. We're gonna keep throwing the net of God's goodness into the circle that we call Journey City. 1.8 million people live in a 30-mile radius around our broadcast location. That's a lot of fish in that sea. And so many of them need hope, need help, need to know Jesus. So we're gonna keep throwing the net into Journey City until the net is full, until every person hears the good news about Jesus and has an opportunity to experience God in a real way. It's why we help people outside of our walls who are near us and need us through what we call Code Red. It's why we give meals to people who are hungry and help people who are struggling with addiction find recovery and hope. It's why we serve those who are dealing with mental and physical illness and on the fringes of society and have been overlooked by others. We do this to be the hands and feet of Jesus and to throw the net of God into the water of our region. It's why we launch locations and invest in them to see them grow. It's why we give because God works through our generosity to fill the net. God wants his net full. It's his desire. It's what he's really like. There's still room. There's always room until the net reaches the shore. There's always room for somebody else to experience God. Maybe the very person that some of us have written off. And I get it for some of us when we hear this, we think, oh, I know, I probably should be helping other people experience Jesus, but to be honest, my life is not that fun right now. And how many of us who are followers of Jesus would say that life in the net is not always fun? Not always fun. For starters, there are other fish in this net. (laughs) Some of them have an attitude. Sometimes we get our gills caught in the net. We get a little sideways, and we're like, And we're in the net, but we're not having the best time. And so it's so easy to forget the other fish swimming around us. You know, one of the biggest things the enemy of our faith wants to do to keep us from being productive and fruitful as followers of Jesus in this world, he wants us to get so caught up on the little things we're struggling with in the net that we forget that all around us there are people who would give anything to be in this net we're in, to know the love and goodness of God. In fact, the enemy of our faith wants us to get so caught up with the inconveniences of being in the net that we forget about the people who don't know Jesus yet, when the truth is, listen, the worst day I've ever had with Jesus is better than the best day anybody will ever have without Jesus. And God wants his net full. And as a church, we want to reflect that. We want to have God's heart toward our region to see the net full of fish of every kind. And we won't stop with just seeing the net full because not only 
does God want his net full, but he wants all of us to understand that just being in the net is not enough. It's a great start. Being in the net is really important. If we're not in the net, if we're not in the room, if we're not in environments like this, if we're not in groups, if we're not on teams, if we're not living out our faith with other followers of Jesus, we're not living the kingdom life. We're missing out on the kingdom life. But none of that stuff is what rescues us ultimately. The only point of the net is to bring us to the one we need the most. So the net is actually not the point. The one we need the most is the point. But he throws the net into the, into the water to draw us to him. So that's what the net does. But we've got to understand, just coming to church or serving or giving is not what separates good fish from bad fish in the end. It's having our sins, all the stuff that we think, say, or do that is less than God's best for us. It's having all of that forgiven through faith in Jesus. And out of being forgiven, continuing to follow Jesus, that's what makes the difference. The net just brings us to the one we need the most. So are you just in the net? Or have you given your life completely over to Jesus? Because that's a good fish. Someone who has said yes to Jesus, trusting in him and following him. And that's how Jesus explains the story. He says the kingdom of God's like a great net, thrown out, draws in every kind of fish. But in the end, they're sorted. And that is the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked people from the righteous. Now, again, you may not buy this end of the world stuff, but Jesus did. And he urged us to listen. He spoke often about this sorting that's coming. Good fish, bad fish. And for any of us who have some other plan besides trusting Jesus, that's a sobering thought. Now, if you don't believe Jesus... You know, if you think he didn't know what he was talking about, then you might write this off. But if you think there's a chance he's telling the truth, I mean, it's a sobering thought, right? If I have some other plan for my life other than trusting in Jesus, that I could get to the end of my life and realize my life was just thrown away. Remember my fishing story? Man, I reeled that fish in. I thought it was great. I got it in the net. I was like, I got a fish, man. But someone with an experienced eye was able to look at it and go, that's not the kind of fish you want. I do not want to get to the end of my life and realize I was not the kind of fish I thought I was. I don't want to have some other plan besides trusting in Jesus to save my life. And by the way, I'm not talking about living a perfect life when I talk about being a good fish. I have not lived a perfect life. I've not lived a perfect life for the past 10 years. How many of us would say that's true of us too? I have not lived a perfect life for the past 10 months. How many of us would say that's true? I have not lived a perfect life for the last 10 hours. How many of us would say that's true? Okay, I'm gonna stop there. I'm not gonna say 10 minutes because everybody around you is gonna start thinking, what did you do in the last eight minutes, 32 seconds? Someone makes a good fish, a perfect life. What makes a good fish is a life that is depending on on the perfect work Jesus accomplished to make us right with God. Leans in and listens to him. So if you're here, one of our locations today, and man, I'm, I'm glad you're in the net. And you're, any kind of fish is welcome in the net. And for some of you here, like, I never thought I would be a net person. Seriously, some of you were like, you know what, hell will freeze over before I ever go to church. And God was like, well, it's not quite correct theologically, but come on, come to church. And you're here, and you never thought you'd be in the net, but you're here, and I'm so excited about that. And you don't have to believe anything. You're not ready to believe yet, because if I can talk you into it, somebody else can talk you out of it. So feel free, just keep coming, wait, and see what God does in your life. But I just need you to know that being in the net is great. It's just not enough. And the next step is to believe in and follow Jesus. Because the point of the net was to get us to a place where we believe in and follow Jesus. And for all of us who are, we can be encouraged by this. Because it means we know our sins are forgiven and our lives belong to God. And we will be with God forever. So every day of our lives, our first thought should be, because I know Jesus... 
I am forgiven and free and I will be with God forever. And then our second thought should be, in the meantime, God wants his net full. And the reason he's called you and me as followers of Jesus in this world is to partner with him to see his net full with fish of every kind. See, if there's a God and he's choosing who's good and who's bad, who gets in? Well, who gets in the net? Fish of every kind. Every kind. It is not our place to decide who gets in the net. God wants his net full. People like me get in the net, thank God. People like you, people like the people we're friends with and work with and live near and are married to or the parent or kid of. God wants as many people as possible in his net. And then the second answer is once the net reaches shore, when this life is over, there will be a sorting. And it's not just being in the net that will make the difference. It's believing in and following Jesus in this life that will make the difference. Over and over again, if you read the story of Jesus' life on earth, over and over again, he said things like this. If you have ears to hear, listen. Because that's what makes the difference. So, for all of us who are listening to Jesus, we're not perfect, we don't have it all figured out, but we are believing in Jesus and we're following him in this world. We have been invited to partner with Jesus, to throw that net into the water, to fish for people. Did you know that's what Jesus said to some of his first disciples? They were, they were fishermen. And so he said, if you'll come follow me, I'll teach you how to fish for people. What does that mean? I'll teach you how to use your stories and your influence to make a difference for me in this world. And we have the same invitation. Next weekend, At the Movies Begins, it's a great opportunity to invite somebody who doesn't know Jesus yet to one of our locations to experience God in a real way. And here's why it matters. The day I left for that trip to Idaho I talked about a few minutes ago, this happened just a couple of weeks ago, I needed a ride to the airport. And a guy named Connor, who serves in Journey Kids here, uh, volunteered to take me to the airport. So on the ride, I asked him, I said, Connor, tell me your story. Tell me how you came to the journey and started following Jesus. Tell me, I wanna hear. And he told me that he grew up in another state. And although his family kind of, some of them loosely believed in God, he had never done the church thing. But he was in college and he had to read uh, a book for a college course. And in that book, there was a line that said, research shows that people who go to church regularly are 30% happier on average than people who don't. So he thought, huh, that's interesting. He continued in college there and when he finished college, he realized, man, I, need, I really need to get away from where I am and just get a fresh start, and he moved to Delaware. And when he got here, he remembered that, that he had read that, and he thought, I wanna be happy, that's what I want. So he decided to come to church. He came to the journey for the first time, and he was very nervous, because he had not done the church thing before, but you made him feel like he belonged. And you smiled at him, and you were kind to him. And he came in, and he sat in the room, and he heard the message. And Connor looked at me on that ride of the airport. And I was thinking, Connor, don't look at me, look at the road. <laughs> like, I know the net's gonna reach the shore, but not today, not today. Let's... <laughs> Just being honest. But Connor looked at me and he said, I, he said I'll, I'll tell you, I don't really remember everything you preached that day. But I do remember that when you got to the end and you said, if you want to put your faith in Jesus and begin following him, today can be your day. He said, I think my hand was the first one in the air. And that day, in one day, Connor went from being in the net to being with God forever. He's still alive, by the way.
Aren't you glad I think of those things to add those details? Are you very much alive. But he's with God in this life and he's gonna be with God forever because of one day. You say, why does that story matter so much? That was week one of At The Movies 2021. That's the power of one day, one invitation, one moment, when somebody who just gets a chance to be in the net is brought to the one they need the most. So here's what I wanna ask you to do. Because God wants his net full at all of our locations this weekend, before you leave, we're gonna hand you a little packet that has three at the movies invite cards inside. And what I wanna ask you to do is to pray over those three invite cards and invite at least three people to at the movies this week. You can invite a neighbor, a friend, a family member, a coworker, an enemy. If you've tried everything else, maybe they just need to come to church. But I want you to invite at least three people and then, and by the way, pray over those invite cards. You say, well, how, what do I pray? Maybe something like this. God, I know the kind of God you are. You want your net full. Would you guide my conversations? It can be that simple. Invite three people and then in that little packet, there's a Swedish fish. So when somebody you invite comes to church, eat the fish. You're welcome. Why does it matter? Because God wants his net full. It's the kind of God he is. And if you and I are gonna be the kind of people who are like the God we've been changed by, then we're gonna be full net kind of people. And we're gonna do everything we can to partner with God to get the net in the water. And whatever your story, aren't you grateful you're in the net today? I mean, thank God, right? I'm so thankful I'm in the net. I'm so, so sure so many of you are so thankful as well. Thank God. And God doesn't want to stop there. He wants to continue transforming your life as you follow Jesus in this world. And part of that is teaching you how to fish for people. So as we wrap up the series, get ready to go into At The Movies next weekend. If you would say, man, I received that in my life today. I want to do what God has given me an opportunity to do to help him get the net in the water. I'm gonna invite people to experience God with me. Would you just shoot your hand up, hold it up high all over the room? I mean, how powerful could it be, all of our locations, if all of us issued three invitations this week? What could God do? He wants his net full. Let me pray it over us. Father, we love you, honor you today, God. We know what you're really like. You're a net full kind of God. And we're very thankful that you by your grace allowed us to get in the net and in the process come to know you in a real way. Now we're asking you, God, would you work through us, our conversations, our friendships, our relationships, our invitations. This coming week, make a difference in Journey City. We wanna see fish of every kind, people of every story and background experience you here. Work through us, we pray, and we give you the honor for it, believing you for it in Jesus' name. And while you let God speak to your heart for just a moment more, listen, whatever your background with God or church, faith or any of that, I believe God wanted you to be here today so that you could hear about his goodness and grace and hear about Jesus and what he's done for you. He died to forgive you. That means every debt you've ever owed spiritually to the God who created you is covered. And he died to give you a new life. He rose again so that you could have power to follow him. And if you want that today, it does not matter what your story has looked like up until now. It does not matter how far you felt like you are from God. If God's drawing you to him, today can be your day to put your faith in Jesus and begin following him. So I'm gonna lead us in prayer again. And this is your opportunity. If that's you, you wanna begin following Jesus. Right where you are, whisper out a prayer of faith, something like this. Jesus, today I believe in you. By your grace, rescue me. I wanna follow you. I'm turning away from the life I've lived without you. 
put all my trust in you alone. Save me today. And if that's you, while everyone around you stays focused on God, if you would say, I wanna be included in that prayer, I'm putting my faith in Jesus, all of our locations, would you lift your hand, just hold it up high right now, boldly, yeah, putting my faith in Jesus today. If you're watching online, you can type the word faith in the comments, whatever platform you're on. We wanna celebrate that with you. And Journey, would you help me?